If you've been struggling trying to figure out how to use your credit card in a way that will increase your credit score, force the credit card company to increase your credit limits, all while paying absolutely zero interest ever to the credit card companies, this video is for you. A few years ago, I released this video explaining exactly how I use my brand new credit cards in a way that gives me massive credit limit increases in no time. And let's just say that video went viral a few times. But the number one comment that I receive on that video every single time I release it is, Jay, when are you going to do a long form video explaining exactly how this works in a way that's a little slower and more digestible? Well, here you go. So what I'm going to do in this video is exactly like I did in that short video a few years ago. I'm going to give two different people the exact same scenario. They have the exact same amount of bills to pay every single month. They're going to get approved for the exact same amount of credit. The only difference that I'm going to show you is how a novice operates with a credit card versus how an expert operates with a brand new credit card. And the hope is by the end of this video, you understand some of the mistakes that have been hindering your credit for the past few years and how to fix them. The dope thing about credit is that as long as you don't have any late payments, you can pretty much manipulate your credit score at any point in time. All you need is the knowledge of how to do so. Now, in this model, the novice and the expert, you versus me, are going to both apply for a brand new credit card with a 620 credit score. Now, we're going to keep this model simple, so both of us are going to get approved for the exact same amount of money. You get $500, I get $500. Now, as a result of us applying and getting approved for a brand new credit line, both of our scores are going to drop a little bit. Every single time you apply for a credit card, your score is going to take a small hit. Every single time you get approved for a new line of credit, your score is going to take a small hit. Now, in this model, it's not exact, but I'm going to say that our scores both drop about 25 points from 620 to 595. So everything we do from here on out is crucial to how our credit will rebound as well as elevate in the future. Now, like I said, I'm going to give both people in the scenario the exact same situation. So we're both going to have about $2,000 in expenditures that can be paid via Visa and MasterCard, which means that both credit and debit are options for payment for everything that we do every month. Now, the first thing that we're going to go over is how you, the novice in this situation, would operate with a new $500 credit card. In month one, obviously, you begin with a $500 credit limit. So like most financial and credit novices, this $500 is now burning a hole in your pocket. Now, you know you got bills and other things that need to be covered by this money, but now you've been struggling long enough. It's time to have a little bit of fun, so we're going to go out and blow $300 on something that we absolutely should not. So this probably bought you a brand new pair of shoes, but it's all good, right? Because you're just going to pay it back anyway, so no big deal. So now that you spent that $300, you now have a remaining $200 credit limit. Not too bad, as long as you pay it back. But is that what you do? No. You go ahead and make the minimum payment on that balance. And did you pay it by the statement date? No, you paid it on the due date. So now, even though I'm not going to show it in this model to keep it simple, you are going to be accruing interest on the balance that you're carrying. So you've made your minimum $35 payment, which brings you back up to a credit limit of $235. Now, what we need to talk about right now is what happens to your credit score when you do this. Now, I already told you that we lost a few points when we applied and got approved for this credit card in the first place. So we don't have a lot of leeway when it comes to losing more points due to frivolous spending and improper payment habits. But let's take a look at exactly what this means in numbers. Now, with a statement balance of $300 out of your $500 credit limits, which means this is the money that the credit bureaus see that you owe to this credit card company, and you're at a 60% utilization rate. You're far above the utilization rate where you begin to see a sharp decline in your credit score. Now, for those of you who have no idea what credit utilization ratio is, let me explain. Now, this number is generally expressed as a percentage. It represents the amount of money that you owe them versus the amount of credit that they've made available to you. I.e., in this situation right now, you have $300 that you owe them. They gave you $500. 300 out of $500, 60% utilization rate. Now, the importance of this is that lenders use this number to help determine how well you're managing your current credit. Now, most people who are new to credit have no idea that a utilization rate of 0 to 9% will have an extremely positive impact on your credit score. When you search the internet trying to figure out what a proper utilization rate is, you'll often see the number 30%. 30% is not and has never been a good credit utilization rate. However, it is the threshold that determines whether or or not you are becoming a high risk that's slightly out of control or a person who is in fact figuring how to manage their money properly. Now, the moment you go over that 30%, and I do mean 31%, anywhere between 31% and 50%, you are now having a negative impact on your credit score. <laughs> you are losing substantial points, which can cause damage in several different ways. Now, let's talk about the danger zone. When you get over 50%, at this number, your creditors are now deeming you an extremely high credit risk and your situation is beginning to have an extraordinarily negative impact on your credit file. Now, why is utilization rate so important? Why does this mean so much to your credit score. Well, you need to keep in mind that your utilization rate accounts for 30% of the 550 points that you can manipulate out of the 850 points of your total FICO score. And the FICO score is the most widely used scoring model in the credit industry. And just in case you're not very good at math like my wife, 30% of 550 points is 165 points. Letting your balances hover around 30%, upwards of 50% when you're talking about your utilization rate is not just detrimental to your credit score, it's absolutely debilitating. Now let's get back to our case study. After you made that minimum payment, you now begin the next month with an opening credit limit of $235. So what do we do? Do we calm down? Do we chill out? Nah, we go ahead and run up another $120 and spend. We hitting the club or we going shopping or we going on an extra date night. Now this will take you all the way down to $115 left in that credit limit from that original $500. It's not looking good. And of course, you're not going to go ahead and pay it off because you used the cash that was in your bank account to pay the bills that you normally have. So there's not a whole lot left to apply to this credit card. So we're going to go ahead and hit this with another minimum monthly payment. And this will bring our credit limit all the way back up to a whopping $150. Now we're only two months into having this card. What do you think the creditor that approved you for this $500 is thinking right now? Oh my God, what have we done? Now, you didn't pay that $35 before the statement day closed. No, no. You waited to pay it on the due date, which means that you accrued more interest from all those purchases that you made during the month and the last month. And what 
does that mean? Well, now that $385 is now reported to the credit bureaus and you're sitting at a nasty 77% utilization rate. You've now gone from undesirable to an alarmingly high risk. Now let's jump to month three where we'll see more of the same. You start off with a $150 beginning credit limit. You spend another $100 that you don't have to pay it back, which will drop you down to a $50 remaining credit limit. And you go ahead and make the minimum payment again on the due date yet again accruing more interest from this month, the previous month, and the month before. Now you're getting into that compound interest category where things are starting to get out of control. But any of you who have ever been in this scenario know exactly how nasty this can get once that interest really does start to kick in. And now we're full on in the debt cycle. It doesn't matter if the credit card is a $500 credit card, a $5,000 credit card, or a $50,000 credit card. Once you get into this part of the debt cycle and you don't have the money to catch up, that interest starts to eat you up. And not just that, because right now your credit score is continuing to plummet while you sit at an 83% utilization rate. You have allowed $415 out of the $500 credit limit that you got initially to report to the credit bureaus because you don't know how to pay it right. And the next month you go through the same thing, but now you're scared. Now you've reeled into spending. You realize you're almost out of money. You know you don't have enough money to pay it back, but you've also upped your lifestyle where you can't fully stop spending. There is no budget in place. There is no discipline. This person is now on the verge of a full-on collapse. A few more months of this, and they'll see that they can't pay this back, and now the thoughts of just letting this damn credit card go are starting to creep in their minds. Now we're looking at a charge-off, which leads into a collection. This is exactly how it happens. Almost every time, invariably. I have private call after private call from people trying to figure out why their credit score is stagnant, why they can't seem to get a grip on things, and then I look at their credit file and I see this. $400 out of $500 used, making the minimum payments. $4,500 out of $5,000. $30,000 out of $50,000, making the minimum payments. It's literally only a matter of time before you raise the white flag. And now that we've established how a novice typically handles a brand new credit card, let's take a look at what I would do. Now, just like you, I begin with a $500 beginning credit limit. Now, the difference between me and you is when you started off with that $500 credit limit, you went out and balled out and spent 300 bucks on frivolous stuff. I'm going to immediately use that credit card to start paying the bills and take the place of the debit card that I used to pay them with. Why did I point out the debit card in this situation? It's because a professional credit card user knows the golden rule. You never use both the money from your credit card and the money from your bank account. This is how you get into debt. When you're depleting the bank account and you're also running up the balance on that credit card, eventually you don't have enough money to actually put into this credit card to pay it down. Now, when you stop using the money in the bank, you start running up the balance from the credit card. When that statement date comes and it comes time to pay the piper, you just take the money from here, knock this down over here. See, credit cards are not as dangerous as people like to make them seem. The lack of education of how to use the credit card and how to use your bank account properly in conjunction with that credit card is what's dangerous. You never, ever, ever run up a tab on a credit card and deplete your bank account at the same time. Never. Now, when I run up the balance on this credit card, it's going to send a red flag to this credit card company because, well, I only got $10 left on this credit limit. And it's month number one. This is a problem. What I need to do next is make sure I inspire confidence from that credit card company by paying that entire balance down. And I'm not going to wait till the due date. I'm going to do it a few days later as soon as all of those purchases clear. This will bring me right back to my full credit limit of $500. And by the way, since I made that payment just a few days after I made those purchases, there's nothing to report to the credit bureaus yet. So my credit score is also safe. And there's no interest being accrued on any of those purchases I just made. Now, do I stop there? Nah, because I told you we got about $2,000 of expenditures that we need to run up every month. So since I have that available $500 credit limit back, and this is a revolving credit line. Remember, credit cards are revolving credit lines. What revolving credit line means is as long as you have that money available, you can continue to use it. You use it, you pay it, it's available again to you. We're not going over to month two. We're going over to week two because we're going to continue to use this and use this and use this. And there's a reason we're going to get to it later. I got more bills, more expenditures, more fun I'm going to have. I'm going to use my credit card. I'm not going to use the money from my bank account. I'm not going to swipe my debit card because when it comes time to pay the piper and I spent that 490 and I got that $10 of remaining credit, the very next thing I need to make sure that I do a few days after those purchases clear, knock the whole thing down again. Once again, bringing back my $500 credit limit after that payment was made, and then I can do it over and over and over again. Now, I'm going to continue this spending and payment pattern every single week for the next six months. I'm going to spend as much money on this credit card as I have to spend in my real life. I'm not going to increase my lifestyle. I'm not going to change up at all because guess what? That credit card money as an expert, I know it doesn't belong to me. Now, I want to take a look at both scenarios side by side and exactly how they ended up at the end of a six month time period. 
You, the novice, spent a grand total of $625 with this creditor. You're continuing to carry a balance while you're paying compound interest on that balance. And you done ran up an 83% utilization rate, which has now tanked your credit score. Me, on the other hand, the expert, have spent a grand total of $11,760. I'm carrying no balance, paid no interest, and I'm running a 0% utilization rate, which has skyrocketed my credit score. Now I know you're gonna now I know you're looking at these two numbers. Well, Jay, I actually won in the end because I only spent $625. You spent a whole bunch of money that you didn't need to spend. But let me remind you. In the very beginning, I told you that we had $2,000 a month of monthly expenditures that were going to be paid, whether it was through the bank account or through the credit card. If you do 2,000 times six, that's $12,000. All of my expenses and my dime extra went to the credit card, strengthening my relationship with that credit card issuer, building my credit score, depending on the credit card, possibly earning me rewards points. There's a whole plethora of things that come when you dedicate the money to a credit card and you don't deplete your bank account. You simply use the money in the bank to pay the credit card. So this wasn't frivolous spending. This was simply proper allocation of the funds. There's no debt here, no balances, no interest, no utilization. It's the perfect scenario. Now, at this point, six months after we got this credit card, we are both looking to get a credit limit increases. You, for a different reason than me. You actually need some breathing room because you've run up a balance and you need help with that utilization rate. But the problem is you represent a person that clearly doesn't understand how to operate credit properly. You're an extremely high risk because you still owe a large portion of that money that you borrowed to the creditor. And the biggest red flag for the creditor is, is based upon your payment history of those minimum payments at the due date, you have no real plan of paying them their money back. I, on the other hand, represent a person who not only understands how to operate credit, but I clearly need more money in order to possibly put myself in a financially compromised, balance carrying interest pay.